Hello, we are the SpaceX fans and welcome to the SpaceX show, the place where you can stay up to date with everything SpaceX. Today's episode is about Starship, so we'll have a look at Mark 1, then talk about SM1 to get you up to speed if you're out of the loop. Next, we'll take a look at SM2 if it can even be called a Starship. Then finally, we'll look at SM3 and what the plan is for SM4. Starship Mark 1 the Mark I Starship was a full structural build of Starship's next generation rocket but lacked the necessary innards to fly. It was built for their September 2019 Starship presentation in which they provided an unprecedented look at what to expect with the vehicle. After the presentation was over and done with, SpaceX added more inside the vehicle in order to facilitate the first Starship test, a pressure test. Then. When the Mark 1 vehicle was being tested, it blew its top, most likely as a result of a bad world where the liquid oxygen bulkhead meets the rings. Starship SM-1 Apparently never designed to fly, SpaceX decided they would go into first pressurise it and then do a static fire. They welded all of the rings and bulkheads together to form the tank section. They attached a load of extra tech and pipes to the inside and outside then sent it out to the test stand for a pressure test. On the night, SpaceX filled the bottom section with liquid nitrogen and may have started filling the top tank, but it didn't look like it had any ice on it. Then, boom, the bottom exploded, throwing the whole thing into the air before the bottom tank imploded and then the top tank exploded when it hit the ground. Now, let's look at Starship SN2. SpaceX were already in the process of SN2 when SN1 went onto the test stand for a pressure test. Once SM1 had exploded, Elon Musk tweeted about what happened, which is that it failed at the thrust puck to dome world. Just so you know, a thrust puck takes the load of the thrust from the engines. Here is a picture of it attached to Mark 1. Later, Elon Musk said that they were going to strip SM2 down to the bare minimum in order to perform another test of the world between the thrust puck and the methane tank bottom dome. From the time of that tweet, it took engineers working around the clock about a week to get everything hooked up and welded for the thrust puck pressure test. For SN2, SpaceX only built a small tank to perform the test with, if you can call these things small. Once it was all good to go, the SN2 tank, or bopper as it's known in the community, was rolled out to the test stand. They strapped the tank down just in case, then on the evening of March 8th, they filled it with water and performed a successful first pressure test. Then, on March 9th, as night fell, SpaceX filled the tank with liquid nitrogen and the pressure got higher and higher throughout the night to complete the second pressure test of the SN2 tank. Finally, let's look at what is happening with SN3. SpaceX are expecting to be able to build these starships quicker and quicker. Eric Berger from Ars Technica recently spoke to Elon Musk in which Musk said that the quicker they can build the rockets, the quicker they can iterate. In this article it says that Musk's goal is to build one to two starships per week this year. It also says SpaceX is designing its factory here to build a starship every 72 hours. Iteration is something SpaceX can and need to do much more freely with starships since they don't have to worry about payloads like they did with Falcon. We're now going to see what the SM3 build is looking like right now. The first thing I want to show you with SM3 is the world quality. I think SpaceX must have their new machine for improving the worlds on these rings because there looks to be a huge change in world quality. A couple of weeks ago, Elon tweeted that to make the world super flat and strong, we're building a heavy duty custom planisher. SpaceX has started preparation for stacking the SM3 segments, so let's have a look at what's going on at the moment. As you can see here, SpaceX has moved the nose cone for SM3, not sure why, but maybe it's to make it easier to move it into the high bay which is on the other side of the tents in this video. There's also been some work happening on bulkhead and ring segments. Here, you can see engineers working on the top part of the liquid oxygen tank. If it wasn't already busy enough, SpaceX are currently laying the foundations for yet another building, not sure what it will be. Let me know down in the comments what you think it might be. Here is the plan for SM3 and SM4. Elon tweeted, static fire in short flights with SM3, longer flights with SM4, but spooling up the whole Starship Raptor production line is really what matters. So we can hopefully expect in the next month or two for SM3 to fire its engines and then perform a hot test. Then with SM4, we might see the first proper flight of this beautiful machine. 
That's it for this episode of the SpaceX Show. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to hit the like button and leave a comment down below. If you want to stay updated with SpaceX info, make sure to subscribe and press the bell icon to get notified when I upload. Thanks for watching and have a great day.